The Brian and Kenzie Show. On Q101. Coming up in about 10 minutes, 710, we'll get you on the phones for Clash with Kenzie. We have Black Keys tickets for you at the United Center. The Q101 Morning Crew. Sports. All right, what happened while you slept with the Cubs, most likely? Because late baseball, Cubs go into extra innings. In the 11th, out there in Arizona, then this happened. Line drive, base hit, right field. Gritchick up with it. Only one will score. And it is 3-2. The Cubs with the lead as Nico comes through. How about that? Nico Horner comes through. He was 2-4 for four in the game. That's the, he had the game tying run. And then the game winning RBI right there with bases loaded. Cubs win 3-2 out in Arizona in 11th. And what a game. More late baseball, more good stuff. Okay, sorry. Uh, there's not some good stuff going on with the Cubs because Seiya Suzuki has been placed on the 10-day injured list with a right oblique strain. Uh, one of the best hitters for the Cubs out. And oblique seems like, I don't know how that fixes in 10 days. This is not, this is not a median average conversation. This is like you're sitting there, you've torn something in your stomach, it hurts. I don't know how in 10 days you get back to swinging again. Oh, so that's, I was going to ask what part of the body that's in. Oblique is your stomach. Okay. No, I can see that hurting. <laughs> It's like a tummy ache. What it doesn't go away. What body do you think you could injure and be playing the next day no problem? Probably my brain. Probably well, just hit my head really hard. <laughs> yeah, that would be fine. You can't already act like that anyways. I think... Your ear? <laughs> my ear? <laughs> you know you ever sleep on your ear wrong and it really hurts for yes. like a day? 100%. It's really, guys, like fold it over. You think it's never going to go away, that pain? <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> I feel that way when I get the sniffles for the first time. Like it's never going away. Yeah. It's awful. I'm never gonna be able to uh, breathe again. You ever wake up with a dead arm? Oh, god! You might, you might as well get a wheelchair when that happens. It's you, a full body pain. You ever had that happen, Kenzie? Where you're like shaking. You're like, oh my god, it doesn't move. Yeah. It's never gonna move again. Uh. You're like, huh, huh. And then all of a sudden, it starts slowly moving, like the needles in your fingers, and you're like, okay. Whew. Do you ever thank God that you were born this day and age because you would have just been like. Manhandled if you were like in a different time period, like you wouldn't have made it as uh, a guy. <laughs> because my I was afraid if my arm fell asleep. Like, I it, like your biggest thing, like like was your ear bent? Like don't you think like, instead of having to hunt for my food, yeah, and like build your house and like fight off people trying to like. Get your wife. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Can you yeah. imagine being a caveman that has your arm fall asleep for the first time? Be, the f- oh, that'd, my that'd God. Be horrifying. <laughs> that'd be the scariest thing ever. Hey, Fred, we're going out hunting. <laughs> my, kid, my arm's dead. It's never coming back. I feel like they had scarier things to deal with. <laughs> like dinosaurs? Yeah. <laughs> There's like a raptor outside the door. I'm sorry, I'd like to help you with this raptor, but I can't lift my arm right now. It's a sleeve you don't understand. <laughs> it feels like 100 pounds all of a sudden. Is that the first guy that said it, too? The like caveman said my arm's asleep? Or he thought it was dead. Like, he thought his arm was that's not working so, anymore. God, that's so true. Yeah. I don't know. He probably thought it was dead. Yeah. Yeah, what a terrible feeling. You're right, Kevin. I wish I was dead. Uh, really? This is the worst. <laughs> well, listen. Uh, also, uh, the White Sox, they are dead. Losing oh, to the Royals 2 0. Hey, you led me there. Uh, it's on a beautiful night for baseball on the South Side. The White Sox joined the 1907 Brooklyn Super Boss as the only team in Major League Baseball to be shut out six times in the first 16 games. Now, I've never heard of the Brooklyn Super Boss. This was the Brooklyn Dodgers before they were the Brooklyn Dodgers. They, they were the Super Boss from, I think, 1899 through 1910. God. That's the kind of stuff we're dealing like with the here. Nicki Minaj song? Can I? Boom, da, boom, 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 da, boom, boom, boom. Oh, super, super bass? bass. <laughs> oh, okay. If they added an S to it, it is super, <laughs> yeah. super boss. Which was named after a popular circus act at the time. These are the stats we're digging to to find to describe the White Sox these days. It's early. It's April still. This is, Brian, I'm so glad you said that. This was my thought. We're not even a month into baseball season. I know. What do, what do we do? By the way, I don't know if you if you caught this. White Sox had a team meeting yesterday before the game. Oh, boy. To sort out some personnel issues. Obviously, did a ton of good. They got shut out again. Well, I, I, what, what is this? Why, why is a team meeting bad? Because as Ozzie Guillen once said, good teams win games, bad teams have meetings. Facts. Um, also, our little league has a lot of meetings. Do they have a lot? Do you guys suck? <laughs> I don't think so. It's early. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you're having a team. We don't judge April baseball like that. No, they're nine, so we just take it easy. I mean, you've had spring training. You've had all the time to ramp up to be good and work on everything. When you're having a team meeting a couple weeks into the season, that's a terrible sign.
Yeah, Cubs aren't having team meetings. Yeah. They're, they're out there winning games. West Coast road trip's been great for them. Yeah. I remember the Bulls had a team meeting, I think, like in the first or second week of the season That's last right. year. That's right. It's like, you know. How do you know that the team meeting was about, like, Maybe someone's birthday's coming up. <laughs> That's it. You don't know. That would, that would just be a birthday party. Yeah. You got to meet him. You got to who's planning it? Who's going to host it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So what are we doing for for Debo's birthday, yeah. guys? Oh, I thought we were talking about how we suck. I'm sorry. Oh, well, good. Let's go to Jewel. They have great yeah. cakes. I guess I won't call Sky Zone right now. <laughs> See? Um, the WNBA, big time for Chicago Sky last night. So Caitlin Clark went number one overall, obviously, to the Indiana Fever. That was no surprise. A Chicago Sky end up with Angel Reese and Camilla Cardoza. Woo! Her two rivals from college and two of the stars of the last two national championship teams with women's college basketball. So the Bulls are stacked. Indiana Fever gets the best player in history of college basketball for women. They have a game already scheduled, and Megan looked at tickets last night, and they're up to $1,000 in some seats already. Wow. Whereas normally you can get a WNBA ticket for like 20 bucks. That's if awesome. That. Yeah. That's, I find that, that's exciting. It is. That's exciting for the sport. That's really cool. Well, I, think, just, I think you said the Bulls. The, the sky are stacked. Yeah, the Bulls are not. Oh, the Bulls are not stacked. No, I have to yeah. clarify. I thought I missed something with the Bulls. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. I know the sky is doing great. Chicago sky, sky are stacked. And we made a fun of like the... You know, all the trading up, like you t- the Bears have with the draft next week, and you talk about trading up when you're, a, you know, a t- an NFL team, let's say. The Sky did trade up to get these picks. They oh, traded really? things away to get both picks to end up with the number three pick, which is South Carolina's Camilla Cardozo, who's 6'7", and Angel Reese is 6'3". These okay, girls are so ballers. Cardozo was the the center on South Carolina. Yeah, if you watched it, that was the most watched game in history, pretty much. It was she was the beast in there. Just Angela like, was the one who pointed to her hand. That was last year, but yes. yes. yeah, 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 yeah. Meme burned into your mind, probably. <laughs> just for reference. So when they play, she's really pretty too. Yes, yeah. she is. There is like an incredible amount of very pretty WNBA players right now. Well, when they play right? Caitlin Clark, yeah, and when they play Caitlin Clark, that's the rivalry that lost that she lost to both of those players the last two years. So it's going to be, it's going to be fun. I, it's going to be like probably more interesting than the Bulls. Well, I was going to say, I, I feel like for the first time in Q101 history, we're going to be talking a lot of Chicago Sky basketball this Period. year. Period. Sky's the limit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, what are we going to talk about otherwise? Uh, nothing. What, Stadiums that aren't Sox? getting built? Yeah. I mean, crap. I don't know how, uh, Jerry Reinsdorf threatened to leave NBC Sports Chicago last night. Did he really? Yeah, for, for stadium broadcasting, which is based in the United Center. It's something that I think he's a part owner of. We'll talk about that more tomorrow. Oh. Hey, yeah, believe it or not, it's going to be harder to watch the White Sox and Bulls going forward. Yuck. Awesome. Yuck. Brian and Kenzie. On Q101. Brian and Kenzie on Q101. Time for those Black Keys tickets and clash with Kenzie. 312-591-8300. Call in right now to compete in trivia. Bring your A-game. Black Keys playing with the head and the heart at the United Center. Partner with our great friends Live Nation on this. Tickets are on sale now. It'll be Thursday, November 7th. But 312 591 8300. Calling right now to compete against Kenzie in trivia. Brian and Kenzie in the morning. And Chicago's alternative all day. Q101. You can't defeat her. She's too powerful. Clash with Kenzie. <laughs> Let the battle begin. Q101. Here we go. Black Keys tickets with special guest ahead in the heart of the United Center. Now, remember, as we stated yesterday, uh, no more free rides. As nice as you are, and we love you so much for calling in the compete in trivia, but you have to win. Brian's rule. That's my rule. And I just think that uh, we have to get back to people really bringing their A game and guessing on every answer. There's been a lot of I don't knows lately because they know they're going to get the uh, tickets anyway at the end. Not anymore. So everybody listening has a Brian's chance. Not a participation trophy kind of guy. No, I hear about it all the time. Uh, yep. Well, my dad threw away my most improved basketball player trophy, and that's I stuck with he me ever threw since. Threw it away. Yeah, I won most improved player junior year of high school, and I was kind of happy about it. <laughs> and I took it. Kind of happy about it. And he goes, and the car ride home. He took the trophy and threw it in the back seat, <laughs> and he goes, "That's a jerk off trophy." <laughs> <laughs> Like, all right, then I'll go work harder in the offseason here and try to be MVP. Oh, uh, but you never did. I didn't. <laughs> your, li- your life has been hilarious. That's pretty good. <laughs> pretty pretty good. <laughs> you know, anyway, well, I just went off there for a little bit, having a little flashback memory to okay? that. I don't know. I might need a minute. That was kind of a trauma dump. He was right. He's right. 
You know, it was a jerk off trophy. <laughs> the mo- most improved player is a. I don't want to use that word again. Okay, most improved player is just like a to kind of keep you happy. The coach wanted to keep me happy a little bit, you know? <laughs> Were you the worst player on the team, but you just started being less bad? That's what my dad thought, yeah. I think. But I wasn't the worst. I just got a little better. Who was better. the worst? Uh, that Who would've... was worse than you? Hmm. I don't. Well, he you might remember? be listening, my friend. I don't think he'll hold his high school basketball record against you, okay, though. Okay, Jim S. I'm not saying his last name. <laughs> oh, <come on. laughs> I ain't doing it. He's a super nice guy, but he was the worst. All right, that's too bad. Yeah. I mean, I wasn't awesome, but I'm just saying I got better. Well, he was most improved. Well, that's the thing. <laughs> yeah, of course. Well, the players is already great and have a big yeah. jump. Uh, all right, so I don't know how we got there. No participation trophies here in trivia. That's where we got there. And we've got Lauren from Evergreen Park checking in. Lauren, ahoy, what's up? Ahoy, how are you guys? Great. Tell us something about yourself. Uh, I am a nurse at the University of Chicago, and I have four kids in the car with me right now trying to beat each other up. Wow. <laughs> four kids? They have them chained? Yeah. What do you mean they're trying to beat each other up? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're all in a ken and they're in separate kennels? Yeah, yeah I wish. <laughs> Lauren, right. Lauren, have you ever won, like, a Most Improved Nurse Award? <laughs> Um, no, I have not. No, you're naturally good. All right, she, that makes sense. That means you're an elite yeah. nurse. Yeah, there you go. She's Absolutely. not a jerk-off yeah, right? nurse. That's She's right. a nurse, Brian. <laughs> exactly. All right, here we go. First one of five wins. Listen carefully. If uh, Kenzie gets okay. one wrong, you can steal a point. She can do the same with you. And everybody listening still has a chance if Kenzie wins uh, on these tickets. But, uh, you know, Lauren, we're wishing you luck. Call heads or tails right now. Three, two, one, call it. H- heads. Ah, it's tails. I know, <laughs> I know. Uh, Kenzie, question number one. Kenzie, uh, Charleston is the capital of which U.S. state? West Virginia. West Virginia's right. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We got family in Charleston. It's nice, nice town, for despite what West Virginia gets pinned as. What does like, it get pinned as? Like a garbage state. Does it? I, I don't think that. Really? No. What I, think, it, I, think, I think most people think it's a bunch of inbred rednecks there. Oh, that's a leap. I've never <laughs> even heard that. Really? You don't think, people always talk about, oh, they're from West Virginia. You never heard that? No. Uh, no, not really. What are you, guess... from West Virginia? No, no one's ever said that. Maybe they say to you because they think you're like an inbred. No, no. <laughs> Incestual. What did you say? You guys are very sheltered. Everybody thinks West Virginia is full of inbred hillbillies. Wow. Well, I don't. Well, I'm glad, I'm glad. Maybe, they're, maybe their last marketing campaign helped and you guys Charleston's are different. very nice. It is a nice city. All right, let's keep going. <laughs> let's keep going. All right, back to Lauren. Uh, Lauren, Smokey Robinson, Stevie Wonder, and The Temptations are all associated with what Detroit-based record label? What's it called? Ooh, um, Three. Uh, two. The Temptations? The Temptations are the record label. So you got uh, Smokey Robinson, Stevie Wonder, and The Temptations. What's the label called, Kenzie? Motown. Motown is right. Uh, back to Kenzie. That's right, two to nothing. Uh, who had their number 23 retired by the Chicago Cubs? Ryan Sandberg. Ryan Sandberg. Fighting cancer right now, putting up a lot of really inspirational stuff on his uh, social media right He's now. He's also what? getting, um, I believe, a statue at Wrigley this year. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank goodness. He deserves it. He does. Uh, back to Lauren. Which country singer won season four of American Idol? Season four. Carrie Underwood. Carrie Underwood's right. Lauren's on the board. Period. A queen. <laughs> see, Kenzie. That's right. Three to one. Back to Kenzie. How many players are there in a standard on a standard beach volleyball team? How many players? On one team. One team. Like two. There's two. One in the front, one in the back, right? Yeah. Kind of like tennis. <laughs> yes, it's just like that, actually. Oh, okay, good. And pickleball. <laughs> pickleball too. That's right. You can do doubles there. Yep. All right. Four to one. Back to Lauren. She needs a point here. Uh, Chevy Chase, Norm McDonald, and Michael Che all have what in common, Lauren? They were on SNL. They were on SNL. We're going to give you that. Uh, it was on the weekend update desk on SNL. I was looking for but we'll give you that one. That was on that show. That counts. Four to two. Back to Kenzie for the win. Oh, damn. Kenzie, uh, what drink company did YouTubers KSI and Logan Paul help found? Prime. Prime is right. Oh, man. Damn it. Damn it. Are, people, are kids yelling in the back there? Yeah. If I made them eat their cheese that's out of their lunch to be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, here's what you do, Lauren. You hang up right now. Give the baby we... some Cheez-Its. Oh, so good, Cheez-Its. That sounds so good right now. I can't now. wait till my baby can have yeah. Cheez-Its. I know, right? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, we're sorry you didn't win, but hang up and get ready to call. In about three minutes, we'll get you back, and everybody's got a chance, okay? 
All right, no worries. Thanks, guys. All right, thank you so much. Right after okay. Bob Moses, you'll hear God Bless the Baby, and everybody listening has a chance those Black Keys tickets with the Head and the Heart at the United Center on Thursday, November 7th. Tickets are on sale now. So, a couple minutes away, Brian and Kenzie on Q101. Brian and Kenzie in the morning. And Chicago's alternative all day. Q101. Brian and Kenzie on Q101. We still have those tickets. Okay. God bless the baby. Not anymore. Call her 10. 312-591-8300. You have a shot to go see the Black Keys with Brian and Kenzie and Q101 at the United Center. Uh, so do that right now. 312-591-8300. I was uh, like shaking. I wanted to give her the tickets. I couldn't I, even talk. I felt bad too. Listen, we got entirely too loose around here with participation trophies. And uh, this way, everybody gets a shot at the tickets. It's more fair for everybody that listens to the show. And it's, you know. It's just, it's, I think we should get double the tickets so we can always give the participants. <laughs> give some of them. And, and then, then we can always give some away at the end. Okay. That's fun. Well, I'm fine for brainstorming. We just got to find more or tickets. Or you could, maybe you start this cash thing and you throw $100 in each week. Oh, just me on and that? And then the, they can get the tickets or the cash. You know what I mean? You want to contribute? No. Why not? Well, I feel like it should be a you thing. Your but, name's first. Let's see, though. The show's called, uh, the bit's called Clash with Kenzie. Right. I'm already doing all the work. <laughs> if you think about it. I can't. And, and it's rather I had the money. Mm. And then you'd finally cheer for me for once in your life because it would be your money on the line. Well, that's true. Which would be a nice benefit for me. Well. Because normally you're, like, tripping me and pushing me and throwing hard questions at me. Mm. We'll work Think on this. Think about how hard the questions would be for the listener and how easy they'd be for me if it was money on the line. <laughs> I definitely like money. Uh, I know. So we'll brainstorm on this a little more. Right now, it's going to be the person right now get those tickets. Call or 10 at 312-591-8300. Time to highlight. Some people from, uh, well, the Las Vegas area, there's a park out there called uh, Mead, and it's incredible. It's beautiful. There are millions of years in the Lake Mead National Recreation Area. All those, you see on TV, uh, the orange rocks and other oh, weird. Oh, yeah. They're all balancing off these little beams and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, well, these two dudes went up there, guys like in their like 40s looked like. And started knocking off the rocks that had been standing there. Everybody comes and pays, fly in, hotels, trips to go see the in the in the area. And they're just seen pushing the rocks off their stands that have been formed from the wind for like millions of years. Just pushing them off and ruining them. I just think, call me old fashioned, mm. you should have to face, like you should, your crime and punishment should be similar. So now you have to get pushed off of something. I'm fine with that. You know eye I for mean? an eye. I'm fine for that. I think it should be like a neck and neck experience. Yeah. You know? Uh-huh. These guys, like one of the guy's daughters, like probably like a nine-year-old daughter, was behind him screaming. I don't have the audio of that, sadly, uh, but we do have the audio of the park ranger who came in and talked about it, one of the police How guys. How do we have that audio? Who was mic'd up? Uh, well, this not not of them pushing it off. There is a video. They were shooting video on No, it. I know, but, like, who, did the park ranger, like, record it? This was later. He, the park ranger came in and just talked about the situation and what these I guys see. were doing. It takes millions of years for these rock formations to form, and then you get a few idiots out there <laughs> that are destroying all that work of nature. It's pretty appalling. It's kind of disgusting. Why would you even do something like this? Like, like why on earth would you do this to this area that's so beautiful? It's one of my favorite places in the park. Yeah, idiots just pushing it off for no reason at all. I, like, you know what I realized mm. in, in the world is that people now almost think that everything belongs to them. Have you noticed that? Mm -hmm. Like, their experience is the, like, that. that's what matters the most all the time. All the time. Yeah, like these guys are in this park, and they're like, oh, let's go push that rock off there. Yeah. And not realizing that it's no one's ever going to see that again now, what they did. They pushed yeah, this rock off, and the, and the little girl was screaming. But Dad, don't. The, dad, the guy almost fell, too. Like, that would have been better. That would have been karma. I mean, clearly. not for the nine-year-old watching, no, I suppose. No, a little trauma, a little as therapy as later the, on. This wasn't a traumatic enough experience. But I just I just feel like, I don't know, you know, like that, that... Um, a lot of little kids have this, and I thought it, you would grow out of it, but I'm finding more adults that have it, too, that I realize. But you know how they say that there's that part of your brain where you don't think of the next step when you're a little kid? So you mm -hmm. do something because you don't realize, oh, I'm throwing this ball, and something could knock over. You just you can only focus on what you're doing. Right. And I'm like, did something happen to these adults where the other part never developed? <sighs> Like, I'm pushing a rock. Like, they just don't. It's like, it's not, what's going on? 
And the other guy's egging him on like a friend, like a little kid. He's like, yeah, man, do it. Let's help me get this rock off here. It is. It's something you would do like when you're burning ants when you're a kid or something with a magnifying glass. It's weird, right? Yeah. It's yeah, just they, like a weird yeah. behavior where it's like, what are you getting What are you getting out of that? Yeah, because not the least for these guys' social media, I don't think. They're not well, like influencers. So is it illegal, by the way, what it, they did? Absolutely, it's illegal. And it's a $5,000 fine and six months in jail and all the way up to a felony offense, depending on how they want to rate what you did. Like I, mean, I think they're going to get judged really harshly because they like, it's not like they tripped and knocked it over. Yeah. You know, they, they were so excited to do it. <laughs> oh my God, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry I ruined the million year old rock. That's what would happen to me, by the way. Yeah. A thousand percent. <laughs> the Brian and Kenzie Show on Q101.